Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your boy Three Stacks in his thing, baby. And uh, today we're going to be going over an update on Paleozoics. Due to a um, slight popular request, a lot of people wanted to kind of just, you know, see my take on Paleozoics again. Um, so this one is very competitive, just minus the aspect of hand traps. Um, simply because I chose to play Carter Demise in my list, and that's pretty much the only reason. Um, my apologies for the awkward angle that I'm recording in. I just recently moved, and I'm unable to fit my table in my new place right now. So I have to record on my ottoman, which is a little different, but, you know, it's just temporary, so please bear with me. But yeah, you guys, I think Paleozoics is an awesome deck. It has a very high ceiling. And um, if I was ever to choose this or Altergeist, I would choose Paleos any day, even on the rainiest day. I just find that uh, Altergeists are attempting to do what Paleozoics already do so well. Um, the basis of the Paleozoic archetype is extremely, extremely control-oriented. Um, it's very aggressive and fast-paced due to it being a trap deck. Most people overlook the fact that this deck can easily OTK, easily pump all, exceeding amounts, surpassing 8,000 damage. Uh, the ability to tank and grind, um, it just exceeds the expectations of the average um, of the average Yu-Gi-Oh player who does not understand how the deck works. But I'm going to go ahead and hop into the list, you guys. I hope that you enjoy this video. So let's start off with the monsters. We have three copies of Swap Frog. Uh, Swap Frog is absolutely, um, basically, your best starter play in the deck in the form of a monster. Um, it accelerates the progression and tempo of your deck immensely. I mean, just on an exponential scale. Um, it's ridiculous how much faster the game will get once you resolve a Swap Frog. Um, because it just kind of says, now I'm going to kill you next turn. And you have to be ready for it. And I also play three copies of Esteban and two copies of Roni Homie. Um, your swap, your 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 frog engine for every Paleozoic deck, I think, should be virtually the same. The only number that can differentiate is the amount of dupe frogs that you play. But I actually think that the dupe lock is one of the most powerful lockdowns in this deck, um, and it's so strong. Uh, and it's really only gonna be seen more often when you play three dupes because sometimes you have to pitch a dupe for your swap frog. Sometimes you open up with one and you need to be able to summon him off of your totally awesome. So it's really important to play three, in my opinion. But yeah, your swap frog, uh, your frog lineup is always going to pretty much be the same in every Paleozoic deck. I don't think that is going to change. I play four spells. I play two card demise and two desires. Um, I could easily just play three desires, but I, I actually decided to do just a two and two instead of a three and three and kind of go overkill on it. I do also play anti spells. Um, but the main reason for playing two demise is the kind of deck Paleozoic is, is it's actually very, very fast tempo and it special summons a lot. A lot of the summons is during on your your, during your opponent's turn, but also if you really want to access some of your better plays, you're gonna have to go into your extra deck. And Carter Demise kind of conflicts with that, so it's a really good starter play. And the only time it's a powerful recovery play is if you get evenly matched. If your opponent happens to resolve an evenly match against you, Carter Demise is one of the best cards to pretty much re establish yourself. Um, you kind of just get your engine kickstarted all over again just by drawing three. Um, and it allows you to kind of not only recover from the evenly, but also it makes it to where it's really hard for you to lose to an evenly match because you have a card like this and also desires. And if you can resolve a demise into a desires, you'll end up with four cards in your hand. So you've pretty much just replaced everything that you've lost, which is really good. So your your spell count is going to differentiate between uh, player preference and based on the play style of each person. Um, but I actually like the two and two ratio myself very, very much. Now the traps is pretty much, you know, the bread and butter of the deck. Let's get into it. So I play a fair amount of Paleozoic starting off with three Kanadia and three Olenoids. And I also play two Dino Misses. Um, these are your spot removal Paleos. The weakness to these cards is that they do target for cost. So if a card cannot be targeted, it's really hard for Paleos to get over it. And um, that's one of the things that they do struggle with. They do struggle with monsters that can't be targeted because their main methods for removal do not, you know, they target. But you play other cards in your deck to kind of supplement for that one weakness. The mitigations are going to be floodgates, obviously. Um, but yeah, we have these eight basic Paleos that are for your spot removal. I also am a huge advocate of three Morelia. Um, I like this card and I love Pykea as well. I'm very fond of Felucigenia, um, but I'm not playing all of those. Um, but Maria is really good because it, it kind of just allows you to make a totally awesome on your next turn because you're getting two Paleozoic traps in your grave for the cost of one. And um, you basically just get to activate your traps, chain those two from grave, 
and you basically as long as you can protect those two paleos next turn you can overlay them into a totally awesome and you already have started your frog engine without drawing any frogs so basically drawing one maria is not only the equivalent of drawing two paleozoics but it's also the equivalent of drawing a swap frog you're just making it in a different way which i find it to be a very high ceiling card naturally this is the win condition on my deck a lot of the times i'm just being able to set up for that next turn totally awesome special the swap frog for my deck not the dupe frog cinderonin totin uh if they live you get to basically special because i'll use the swap i'll use the uh totally awesome to like sack off the swap for his negation if he lives for that turn you get to special another swap and you've totally just got your entire frog engine started um just because of maria so i really love the card that's why i played at three it also ups the count of paleozoics because with this deck it's obviously not a frog deck it's a paleozoic frog deck so I find it's really, really important for you to see your Paleozoics. You want to open up with multiples at least two every single turn one. So that's why I play so many. And I still also play two Lee and Chaya. Um, Lee and Chaya is an ex like an extremely skillful card. Um, I like it because it's a combo extender. And also, sometimes when you burn out of resources, it can be the one and only play that you can make sometimes. So I really like playing two of it. And it's not at the sense of, oh, I'm scared that I banished the one of, of Desires. It's actually because I like resolving more than one per duel. Um, once you get set up with your um, your Paleozoic engine and you make your Opabinia, you've already got your Swap Frogs going. You can just banish a Ronin, uh, banish a Frog, summon Ronin, play this from hand due to Opabinia being on the field, chain a trap, and put a Frog back into your grave. And that kind of just extends your plays in the sense that you can get a free rank 2 just off of that one play. Um, so I really like the Lee and Kaya a lot. I, I, in fact, I love the card. It's really good. And I personally still love Paikea as a great one-off um, because sometimes you have those excess Paleozoic traps in your hand when you make your Opabinia. Opabinia is insane, by the way. Um, and you pretty much, you just activate Opabinia's effect, search this Paikea, um, net yourself a plus because you're going to get a free monster on field. You're going to draw two more cards, get a lot more resources to your hand. Um, just an insane card. So that's it for your Paleozoic count play about 14 of them i think uh 14 is like a minimum for me i don't like playing like 10 you just i hate when you don't see them because like if you don't see paleozoics and you don't see frogs your deck is really not that good because you're basically just playing a regular trap deck and you're waiting to draw into your frogs or you're waiting to draw into paleozoics you can't get any damage on board you can't even make monsters without your paleozoic traps or your frogs so making more than half of your deck cater to that is really really smart in my opinion um, just me though. This is the way I like to play the deck. I'm um, starting with our next set of traps We also play triple goals in match and triple rivalry and the reason being is because this deck all of its basic monsters are aqua types and water attributes so these literally hurt the deck zero and uh, when you go into cards like Miss Starboy, when you go into cards like Totally Awesome, Opabinia, Animalicaris, you can still make these cards while being under these floodgates so these actually hurt you like absolutely not at all like they don't hurt you at all really um the only times i think that they kind of hurt is when you want to make a topo but there's no reason why you should have to make a topo if you have cards like these so like that it's it just it's invalid so i really like these at three i like opening up with them so you know that there's a higher chance of also drawing into them off of demise and duality i'm, I'm sorry not uh duality off of demise and desires just really good cards overall and i do play a pair of anti-spell fragrance i only play four spells in the deck um, and really, Paleozoics can play no spells if they wanted to because they just don't really need spells. You plus pretty heavily off of Reckless Greed and Paikea and uh, just being able to net free searches off of your Opabinia, which is really incredible. Because you got to realize those traps have already one for one exchanged your opponent. So when you're able to make an Opabinia off of those, you've just got free value, free advantage. Uh, you just get maximum, maximum, maximum value out of each of your traps. That's the way this deck works. Anti spell is amazing. So we have our eight Floodgates. And uh, then we have just basic normal traps. So you've got a portion, your traps are broken down into three different segments. You have your Paleozoic traps, you have your Floodgates, and then you have your basic generic traps that pretty much any deck can play. Uh, we have Triple Infinite Impermanence. Since we don't main hand traps, it's very important to capitalize on a card like this, being the fact that it allows you to play second uh, very easily. You know, you're going second game is going to be pretty strong because you're able to open up with this due to it being at three. Um, and it just overall, it just helps your deck to function better. Um, also, you still are able to chain your Paleozoic traps from your grave. If you set it as a real trap, you know, you get extra value. You get double negation off of it, and you get a Paleozoic. Um, it's just overall, it's just a really, really good card. I'm glad that it came out because it allowed decks that play Demise to actually have hand traps that are real traps, you know. We have Triple Reckless Greed. Um, Reckless Greed is always going to be a plus one. Um, it's just such a great card. Skipping your next two draw phases doesn't matter because obviously you're just getting the cards early. It's better to get them right now than waiting. 
Because with Paleozoics, they're not the kind of deck that wants to wait. They want to kill you right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we also have Triple Solemn Strike. Uh, strike pairs very well. It's like a wine. It's like a fine wine. It just pairs very well with any combination of another trap. You know, uh, Olenoids, Strike is strong. Olenoids, uh, Canadia Strike is strong. You know, Dinomiscus Strike is strong. You have any of your Floodgates, Anti-Spell, Rivalry. You know, Goes and Match plus Strike is really powerful. Permanent Strike is strong. You know, Desire Strike is strong. Because it just, it complements everything that you do that kind of forces it to, to resolve. It Strike kind of just forces that card to resolve. Um, if your opponent doesn't have, you know, something like a red reboot, there's really nothing they can do about it. Like, they just have to let you resolve your card. So, like, I like to think of Solemn Strike like a fine wine. Like I said, it just pairs very well with a combination of another trap. It's good by itself, but it's even more predominant when you pair it with a combination of cards. Uh, we also have two Threatening Roars. Threatening Roar virtually makes your turn so free. Um, and I really like it. Uh, it's not just about the time rules. It's the fact that once you get your Paleozoics out on the field, if you did not know, they're unaffected by monster effects. So there's not very much that you can do to them. And if you have an anti-spell up, it's not like your opponent can like afterburner them. And they can't be Widow Anchored because they don't have effects. They're not effect monsters. They're actually summoned as normal monsters. So when you flip a card like Threatening Roar, it basically says, not only are my Paleozoics unaffected by monster effects, but now they can't be destroyed by battle. And like I said, if you have an anti-spell, it's not like your opponent can Raigeki you or Afterburner you or, you know, anything like that. So it just kind of guarantees that your Paleozoics are going to live. And if your Paleozoics can live, that can that in itself can be the downfall of your opponent because you're going to be able to snowball into so many different things. Um, so let's hop right into the extra deck now. So starting off, the best Link monster you can make in this deck, Triple Mistar Boy. Um, such a great card. 2,700 uh, Totally Awesomes, you know, 2,500 Defense Dupe Frogs. You know, just such a good card. I, I, I can't believe that this card even exists. It just brought Paleozoics over the top. I think Paleos are better in Link format than they are in the basic format, you know, before Master of Four. Um, and the reason being is because Mistar Boy is such a great card for this deck. It helps so much. You don't really even waste resources to go into this. Uh, once Paleozoics get their snowballing uh, started, they have excess resources. You know, there's so much that they're afforded in the terms of what they can do. They grant so much card economy, net so much pluses, that when you're making your Mastar Boys, it's so free. It's ridiculously good. I like playing three because I do oftentimes switch zones. Like, I'll occupy both these zones and Mastar Boy, link him off with the Ronin, and then go into this Mastar Boy over here and occupy zones one, three, and five, which is really good for me. Um, and of course, you can always just recycle them with Toads, but I love playing three because I go into them very excessively. And for the last two links, we play Borlo and Topo. Borlo fixes a lot of the problems of the deck because, like, if you can't floodgate your opponent with, like, Rivalry or, you know, Gozen, it's always nice to be able to make Borlo under pressure. Um, Borlo under pressure is one of the best plays you can make, like, right now in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's just such a good card. It completely changes the tempo of the game, shifts the tide of the game in your favor, and it's a completely uphill battle at that point. You could be fighting, like, you know... You could be fighting your way to the top, and making a Borlo can just make you get there. It, it, it just really, uh, it, it's an over-the-top, powerful boss monster. And again, you know, when your stuff only targets and you're dealing with monsters that cannot be targeted, Borlo is another way to play around that. And Topo is probably, this is the best deck you can play Topo in, being the fact that you can summon your Paleozoic traps whenever you want by activating a trap, and then they're unaffected by monster effects, so when Topo goes off, it's destroying your opponent's monsters, but not yours. And even when you summon cards like Opabinia, when you summon cards like Anomalicaris, they are also unaffected by all monster effects. So your Topo literally is just like a Raigeki, and he's not even once per turn. This is ridiculous. It's like when you make this, there's no reason why you should lose. And it's so easy to make. Once you have your frog engine going, you could just link him a Starboy and a couple frogs. Or you can go double my Starboy, link that into, you know, this. Because you can use your Paleozoic traps to make my Starboy. So you can go, you know, double my Starboy, go into Topo, 2 plus effect monsters, link rating equals 4. And you've just got a really, really powerful interruption on your opponent's turn. In addition to all of the other really, really powerful traps that you have. Then we have Triple Totally Awesome. I would never play less than 3. I mean, this card should have been banned a long time ago, but I highly doubt that it will ever get banned. Um, this card, I like to look at it as a plus two because it replaces itself, right? So it's a one-for-one -one exchange at the base of it because you're negating a card that your opponent um, activated and it's sacking something for cost. So you're going one-for-one -one in that turn, right? But the plus two comes from the card this card grants 
when it hits the grave and apps to your hand and the plus uh so that's a plus one and then the second card which would come from your opponent gets set to your field so this card not only negated the activation of one card but it gave you two in the long run so i always look at totally awesome as a plus two and when you consider the fact that he's summoning a frog on each standby it's a plus three so the card just completely snowballs and climbs in sheer potency so much card advantage that you can get off of just one totally awesome it's ridiculous then we have triple opabinia i actually love the three opabinia so much um i really just I, I can't get over the card it's just so good opabinia is one of the strongest plays in this deck it really is and it's a standalone card it can really protect itself what i love doing is i love actually being able to make this um you know like in games two and three because now you don't have to set your Paleozoic Traps, which means you are much less susceptible to, you know, evenly match. Don't get me wrong. You can side in, you know, um, uh, reboots or wire taps or, you know, judgment, whatever you want to do. But it's so much um, it's so much easier when you're able to make Opabinia. And don't get me wrong. Totally Awesome is obviously just a way to play around evenly. But sometimes it's really cool when you can make Opabinia in the ways that you can make it. Um, because now it's like your opponent can't really anticipate what you're going to do next and it kind of just makes it to where they their twin twisters dead their afterburner and their jamming waves are absolutely dead you know it's just it's such a powerful card you know i, I really like it a lot um it shines like i said in games two and three but don't get me wrong totally awesome is still an incredible way to play around evenly and this deck can easily make a totally awesome turn one all you really need is a swap in a water and then we have two anomalicaris it's pretty much a Dryden on crack and steroids and heroin. If I needed to really, you know, express how powerful the card is, it's ridiculous. Um, and it nets you a plus one every single turn. And it's still unaffected by monster effects. So if your opponent's trying to negate his effect with the monster, good luck with that. Then we have my OTK makers. Um, actually, this is how you're going to OTK nine times out of the ten. Um, when you're able to OTK and your opponent is pretty much wide open because you've won for an exchange then with cards like... Olenoids, you know, uh, when you've hit them with a Canadian, when you strike them, when you've impermanence them, when you flipped, you know, for example, like, I don't know, like an anti-spell, stuff like that. And sometimes you'll even use the Olenoids to pop your rivalry of the Warlords just to make these cards. Um, So when you're able to OTK, instead of making double totally awesome, you just make these. Um, and what ends up happening is you basically, um, you make your Mastar Boy, you put these both in Mastar Boy zone, Mastar Boy's already base 1900. This is going to become 1,000. You're going to activate Diagnosis Phoenix, target himself. He can attack twice. You're going to activate Cat Shark to make his attack double. So it's going to be 3,000 attacking twice. That's 6,000. You're attacking once for 7,000. That's 7K. And then Starboy being 19, you're attacking for 8,900, which is well over game. Um, so that's the main reason for playing these because when it's time to end the duel, there's no better way than to do it that way. Um, and it just kind of makes it to where your opponent doesn't get a turn. So yeah, I really love this deck. I think it's awesome. I think it's a lot better than Alter Guys. It even shines in the True Draco matchup because some of the True Draco's best floodgates being Gozen, Rivalry, and Anti-Spell and Imperial Order literally do nothing to this deck. Like absolutely nothing. And if they're trying to flip, you know, for example, like Monarchs Erupt, if they actually play that, you have a searchable out being Olenoids that you can just pop it, you know? And you can also just use your impermanence to turn cards like uh, off because you can set impermanence wherever you want. So I think Paleozoics have a great matchup overall against everything that's not like evenly. But the irony is that this deck has its own built-in out to evenly just by summoning a totally awesome turn one. So that is it for the video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and my dream. Um, you know, we as humans have a lot of flaws. I know I have a lot of flaws. I know I make mistakes, but I appreciate you guys for still sticking with me in the long run. God bless you guys. Have a beautiful day. And that is all I have for today. Peace.